Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the basic electricity for the aviation selection test battery um, applicants. Okay, um, I've been getting a lot of emails. Uh, a lot of people have been having problems trying to figure out the electrical part of things. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to clear it up here. So this is just a basically basic introductory lesson to keep you guys from getting lost whenever you see an electrical circuit. Okay, so first we're going to give ourselves some labels. <clears throat> All right. Uh let's just take for instance a I don't know. We'll pretend this is a double A battery. Uh, we have a positive and we have a negative terminal. Let's pull the bump there. Okay, so we have a positive and we have a negative terminal on our AA battery. How this would look schematically is we would see, and just for our purposes, we would see the battery like that. And you'd have a plus and a minus symbol. Okay, now, for our purposes, we just want to assume conventional current, uh, conventional flow of the current will be going that way. So the positive side, just think of it, imagine the flow going that way. That is called the conventional current. Alright, so that's our battery symbol. Sometimes a battery could look like this, but the long side it's always going to be the positive and the short side is always going to be the negative. Okay, so that's our battery. Now, sometimes uh, what will happen is um, we'll have a switch in a diagram. So let's just say in our schematics we'll have a switch. The switch will look something like That's an open switch. Uh, let's put a bulb in here. And then it comes back. So there's no current flowing through this circuit because the switch is open. If we close it, then it'll look like this. And we could assume that current is flowing through the circuit. And we're calling this conventional current. All right. So this is what I want you guys, if you guys aren't electrical engineers, I mean, you guys, if you're an electrical engineers, you understand that. You have a buildup of electrons on the negative side, and the electrons are actually flowing the opposite direction but for you guys that are, are not in electronics this is how you think about it positive conventional because this this is considered conventional flow the powers that be in the 17th century they said okay this is the way the currents flow but the electrons are actually going the opposite direction so anybody that's in electrical engineering or studying electronics there's a difference between electron flow and conventional current flow. So for these, all of us that aren't electrical engineers and stuff like that, this is conventional current flow. I can't overstress that enough so you don't get lost. Now what we're looking at here is called a series circuit. A series circuit. Why is it called a series circuit? Because everything is in series. Everything is in series. You have your battery, we have our switch, we have our bulb. Um, let me just put in another symbol you guys are going to have to figure out. A resistor. A little zigzag line. That would be a resistor. And everything is in series. There's only one way 
one direction that the, or one path, I should say, that the electrons can go. So there's only one path in this type of situation. Now we will get into parallel circuits in a minute here. I just want to make sure I'm covering everything and I am. Now let's change it up a little bit. Now I'm going to show you something called a parallel circuit. In a parallel circuit there are two paths for electricity to flow. Get rid of our switch. Okay, guess I didn't want that. All right, so let's just say we got a, a resistor here and a resistor there. All right, so now we have two paths. We have, we're leaving the battery. We have the big path, and then we have the smaller path. So this is a parallel, and I'll just put P-A-R-A, -A, a parallel circuit. All right. So there's two paths for electricity to flow. All right. So. The question that I'm going to post tonight is going to ask you a question. And let me just figure out if I could just pull this thing up because I want to cover something else in this in this uh, lesson so you guys are clear. And if you're still not clear and I need to explain it even further, um, just uh, just let me know. Email me or post your comments okay so you saw the situation before there was in in the series circuit there was only one path for electricity to flow or the current to flow I should say um, now there's two and what the question is asking all right we have two resistors here now and they want to know which setup gives a greater arrangement which which arrangement gives a greater amount of resistance so <clears throat> let me just put both of those situations up we have a situation where we have let's say a battery mm. put a resistor there and we'll put a resistor there all right and let's just say this is a 9 volt battery all right and then in this this is the series circuit I'll just put circuit that's CIR and then in this situation it will Same 9 volt battery, or very similar one. This is a different circuit. Okay, I need to. One resistor there, one resistor there. Okay, now this is the series circuit, this is the parallel circuit. And let's just say we're going to assign 5 ohms. That's what that symbol, that mega symbol is. 5 ohms there. And here we're going to have 5 ohms. And then we're going to have 5 ohms here. Now, what they do is just give you resistors. That's all. They don't assign any values to them. The reason why I'm doing it is because I want you to see what you're dealing with. Okay? Because you can just throw resistors up there, and if you understand electronics or electrical uh, circuit theory, you'll get it. But you may not, if you've never studied it, you never looked at it. Alright, so. Parallel. Alright, so we have our series and we have our parallel circuit. We have two, we have two formulas that kind of cover what happens here 
Uh, the first formula is uh, resistance, and I'm going to put total, equals R1 plus R2 plus R3, and so on. All right. Now, normally, we're only we only have two we have only have two resistors, but if we had three, we go on and on and on and on and on. Now, normally, if we had three or more in a parallel type situation, uh, the resistance total would equal to one over R one plus one over R two plus one over R three. We can use that for three or more circuits. Might as well just let the paper fall, it keeps falling. All right. And then dot, 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 dot. In mathematical expression, that means keeps going and going. We can keep adding, 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 adding. But since there are only two, I'm going to do this. Because we're basically dealing with fractions, right? So, um, and I have a fraction video. This is my little, uh, say, R1 plus R2 over R1 times R2. So that'd be resistor 1, resistor 2. Doesn't really matter. They're the same value. Um, but if you want, just so we keep everything nice and organized. So our total or res total resistance equals R1 plus R2 plus R3 and so on and so on and so on. So we measure resistors in ohms. So check this out. This is going to be nice and easy. 5 ohms plus 5 ohms equals 10 ohms. 10 ohms. Strong resistance. Now, we've arranged these instead of one electron path like this, this is arranged into two electron or uh, uh, current paths. And watch what happens here. I can see it. It'd be 5 ohms plus 5 ohms over 5 ohms times 5 ohms. And we'd actually get 10 over 25. Uh, we break that down to 5, 2 fifths. Right? But see how much real estate I have. I'll go up. This two fifths is actually one over our total. So what we'll do is we'll just take the reciprocal and five over two is equal to 2.5 ohms. So we have the same amount of resistor, same value, but make sure our real estate is good there. 2.5 ohms as opposed to 10 ohms. So we actually get less resistance. Okay, so this is a type of question that has been coming up because they only give you resistors. They don't assign any values to the resistors. They don't really put any voltage. And it really didn't even matter. It didn't, I did not really have to put the voltage down. I just like doing it like that. If we're going to throw, let's put some numbers up. Let's show a battery, how many volts. Um, as I go along, I'm going to be doing more for you guys because uh, the AFOQT... Uh, the Army SIFT or, or the AFAST test doesn't really focus like this on electronics like the ASTB does. So I'm going to have an electrical series for you guys. And it's something you can take with you down the road. You'll use it a lot, especially if like you get in aviation and stuff like that. So um, we talked about labels, batteries. These are batteries. Remember the positive terminals here and negative terminals there. The flow, current flow, conventional flow goes like this. We view it as coming out of the positive terminal through a resistor, coming down through the resistor, and back. Here, out of the positive terminal, there's two paths because this is a parallel circuit. Going through a resistor here, going through a resistor here, 
and then they come back and come through these paths okay so um let's see uh let's compute resistance in series again we look at this we're leaving the battery r1 plus coming around r2 and it would be r3 blah 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 and so on and so on and so on if they were there and the formula to compute or calculate resistance total resistance in a parallel circuit would be one over well this is two but normally it would be one over r1 plus one over r2 plus one over r3 for three or more but if you only have two circuits you can you can stop if you only have two not two two resistors not two circuits two resistors then what i always do is um and let's just change r1 to seven ohms all right this is right out of the top of my head okay so seven ohms plus five ohms over r1 seven ohms times five ohms so this will be 12 over 35 and then at the end of the whole thing you reduce and then you wind up giving it the reciprocal flipping it over for the reciprocal because this is one over so um i think that pretty much covers it um if you guys have any questions and stuff like that man i know you guys are nervous and you guys are trying to score really really high so it's, it's important that you understand the electrical part so you can score as many points and totally like kill this test and really outdo the, your competition so you guys could get the jobs that you want and stuff like that so i guess that's really about it like i said any questions comments concerns put them in the uh leave them in the comments box or email me um and i just thank you guys for watching and um you know study hard this is keno thomas good evening